love what you said in the PDF. You just want to throw fuzz. So to throw fuzz is to understand, in my personal opinion, is to understand how to best leverage your body into production of energy into into force production um now obviously like the production of energy is one thing and then being able to transfer that efficiently and block and send up chains and all of those cool terminologies we hear day in and day out uh, is a totally different thing so let me turn me up here all right so the reason why i'm really excited for this one is because I put a lot of emphasis into like what I call the personal identification system. And I came up with a system. I don't know if you followed me for a while and seen any of my stuff on, on what I would call like accelerators and drivers. And basically the idea behind it, it's not absolute by any means. I don't think there's a whole lot of things within like pitching that are, that are absolute, but the whole idea is founded on this system that can give individuals a, a better idea of how to move and how to sequence these moving parts within their delivery on the mound to get the most out of their frame, to, to get the most out of their body, to get the most out of their arm. So obviously, I'll send you some context on this in the report that I write up for you um, so you can have a better idea if you haven't been quite familiar with this, but I'll give you enough context for you to have a good idea going into your screening. So there's three types, accelerators, drivers, and hybrids. Accelerators are what I would see as guys that are smaller in size, smaller, um, less, less weight. That, uh, basically means they, they have less uh, available force to produce into the ground. Whereas drivers, are going to be the opposite. Drivers are bigger dudes, uh, probably longer levers, can get away with producing a ton of force and a ton of energy into the ground. Um, and then the hybrids are guys that just do everything. Think like uh, Bueller, Bauer, Verlander, uh, you know, o Otani, I guess maybe. But um, so it's about looking at the individual and saying like, oh, well, if you're, I mean, you're six foot 200. That's why I think this is such an interesting case because like you have qualities from a, a perspective of like your framework that could go either way. And I do want to kind of leave it in your hands to make that final decision. And you can hit me back and be like, yo, I think I'm going to go with this route. Um, but I think your best bet is going with the the acceleration aspect of it. So I'm going to break it down while we do the screening. And then after the screening, we'll double back and we'll talk about everything. Um, and like I said, when, when I write up the full report, there'll be a ton of context for you to get an idea and don't be afraid to shoot me any questions back, but there should be a lot of context. Okay. So you're killing me with the open side view, by the way, this is not open side. This is behind open. Get it right kind of kidding. So the way that I look at, um, the, the energy systems within pitching mechanics itself is you have really three types of energies, like main energy pieces. And, and this is where we get into the, the understanding of velocity and how we produce power output in a short time frame and essentially a short window of movement potential. Right? So first energy system is, is what we refer to within the accelerators, right? Like the forward acceleration, right? Utilizing the slope, utilizing gravity to accelerate and propel our body down the slope, um, to be blocked by the lead leg to have that energy get sent up. Think crash dummies into a wall speeding at a pretty high rate. It's, you know, there's a lot of systems in place that need to go well for that to be, uh, done right. But that's kind of the idea is, 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 uh, really forcing, not forcing, I hate the word for forcing, but like abiding by gravity and, um, almost think about like, how much can I accelerate into my front foot? Now, uh, the drivers, is going to be uh, the ground force energy, the second energy system, how much you can produce into the ground, how much available production of force do you have to be able to put in the ground? How do your drive leg mechanics look? Can you stabilize force and energy in your drive leg? Um, that's where I think we'll get into a little bit when I talk about the drivers. Uh, and then the third energy, which is the, probably the most important piece is, is rotational energy torque. And that's through hip shoulder separation. What I look at is segmentation of the two rotations of lower body rotation, upper body rotation, which you do absolutely really well. Um, this you have, you have the, the, the movement capability to have a lot of power output, to produce a lot of power output. 
in in terms of like how can we kind of mold our mechanics to best fit you know one of those two types and this isn't to say that you need to be like one or two like obviously we always kind of shoot for the hybrids but it's taking what your body presents and it's taking what um, you do well you do a really good job of creating torque and rotational energy you're going to even be you're going to have even more of that rotational energy available if we clean up the arm action and the positioning of the hand um, but i would just look at your initial move the tempo in which your lead foot lifts off the ground and uh, the uh, the amount of acceleration that you have going into front foot strike. So when I look at your, when you're, whoa, words are fun. When I look at your video from the side here, uh, the backside, it, it, it looks, um, cause I have like a checklist, basically like piggybacking off that system that I've kind of put, put together. I have a checklist of like, all right, well, what does he do good? Does he produce a lot of energy into the ground? Does he have good drive leg mechanics? Is he getting a lot of forward acceleration? Where's his energy production, uh, majority of his energy production coming from? Um, so for me, I see that your drive leg uh, mechanics needs a little bit of work. Um, you kind of shift this, this drive knee kind of comes down into its, uh, kind of internal rotation of that hip fairly early. Uh, but your trunk is still kind of trying to stay back it's tilting to try to still load up your drive leg, even though your drive legs already collapsed. Um, and then by the time you get to front foot strike and full anchor point, you're kind of, I mean, this is where I would like the open side video, but, uh, it kind of looks to me like you're upright, uh, maybe with a little trunk flexion, a little bit of forward flexion. That's great segmentation though. So now with that being said, let's break this down. Uh, I got your boy here, Sonny Gray. Sonny Gray, I have put into the category of accelerators due to his size and due to his, the amount of, due to the tempo that he initiates from his initial move. Um, obviously when he incorporates like hesitations, it's a little bit different, but uh, watch, watch what he does from a movement standpoint. So biggest things that jump out, I would say the, the tempo in which his lead foot is lifting off the ground is one of them. The, the amount of space he's giving his lead foot to cover to, to influence even more acceleration. So from this point, see how he's got that kind of uh, lead leg, hip, external rotation, little Josh Beckett-esque movement here. So he's now going to cover from this point to now all the way down to that point. So he's giving himself a lot of ground to cover, which is giving himself a lot of opportunity to accelerate his body. So you're also going to see before he reaches peak leg lift, he's getting his body to shift, right? You're going to see it here. Boom. Shifting. Now abiding by gravity. He's got also exceptional drive leg mechanics, um, but he doesn't get stuck with his trunk and his torso trying to load his, his drive leg right? And you're going to see that as he comes down to his full anchor point here, you're going to see his trunk much more into flexion, which is going to aid into his ability to accelerate his arm into release and then give himself time to decelerate. Now, um, I don't expect you to look like this. Sonny Gray is one of the, my favorite dudes to watch in terms of his movements. Um, but this is something that you can get a picture for what that looks like. And now you can see that timing in which that hand flips up above the elbow, right? And the elbow drops below the shoulder in relation to that front foot truly anchoring down, right? You see that, I would call that like the velocity enhancing move. So the, the rear foot snapping the rear hip into rotation, boom. And now you have all of this rotational energy. You have all of this forward acceleration, He's even got a lot of ground force production, but now he's positioned with his hand optimally, efficiently to then receive that energy as the lead leg now blocks that, right? So super easy, right? Yeah, right. Um, whereas like a driver, you know, to give you that context, a driver is going to be less fixated on that forward acceleration and more so like, all right, let me load the drive leg and hold on to this, this energy, um, and then go. I really do believe you're just going to be better equipped to accelerate. Um, and I think that's going to 
hopefully in turn clean up the arm action. So now let's talk about what you're going to see in the report. All right, dudes, Robbie Rowe here. Thank you for watching that video. If you're interested in booking your own mechanical analysis, you can click that link right there. Also tell you a little bit about the service and what it entails. Hit that link right there. Subscribe, please. You can also check out that video right there, which is related to the video that you just watched if you want to get some more context on that. All right, guys, much love. God bless. Till next time. See ya. Strike three, you're out!